Uh, thank you all for joining us today at Jout International 2020. Uh, please welcome Jackson Lee, and he will be talking about the great myth of effective team teaching. Uh, please go ahead, Jackson. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, James, for uh, hosting the room here. And thank you very much for taking your time, uh, everyone, to come to my presentation. I don't know why I'm wearing earphones when no one's actually talking, uh, so forget about that. Um, this presentation is called The Great Myth of Effective Team Teaching. My name is Jackson Lee. Um, first of all, I do want to let everyone know that uh, the schedule is more, sorry, the, the presentation is more packed than I had expected. So I don't think there'll be time for Q&A at the end, but I will invite uh, everyone with questions or feedback to come with me to a to a hangout room later so that uh, I can hear what you think and if you have any questions. Um, but if I'm talking a bit fast, because you know that uh, I'm kind of rush on time. Um, all right, but anyway, the great myth of effective team teaching. Uh, first of all, uh, just a very quick self-introduction. My name is Jackson Lee. I'm a specially appointed lecturer at Toyo University in Tokyo, uh, but I used to be an ALT. I was an ALT for about five years. And yeah, uh, you're gonna hear more about that in a bit. Uh, what got me thinking or wanting to do a presentation on the idea of uh, team teaching is because of my own experience. When I first came to Japan, uh, I had no experience, no training in, uh, in teaching or education at all. Um, so when I was placed into a, a, an elementary school to teach, um, I was told that I would be an assistant to the main teacher. But then what I found out was by assistant, they meant that I would be doing everything. So I became the T1 um, when I was teaching at elementary school. And that went on for two years. I was the one planning everything, preparing everything. And I enjoyed it, honestly. Uh, but two years later, I went, uh, I wanted to do something else. And that's when I went to Givu and I started teaching at junior high schools. And I found that my experience was the complete opposite where suddenly I didn't do any planning at all. Uh, I had no need to prepare anything. Uh, in fact, there wasn't really a need for me to know what the lesson was going to be, uh, to be about. Uh, I had to go find out um, just so that I know what was going to happen in the class. But other than that, my experiences were so different that I wasn't really sure what my job was. Uh, I was told that the job of an AOT was to team teach with the JTE, the Japanese teacher of English or the homeroom teacher. But what did that mean? Right? What, does, what did it mean to team teach? It was really confusing because my experiences were so uh, extremely different. And that got me to the question, more importantly, is uh, what is good team teaching in practice? Okay, I think I was doing kind of team teaching, even though I, it didn't feel like a team, but what is good team teaching? Uh, from my own experience, my answer to this question would be, I don't know. Uh, I really couldn't tell because I didn't feel like I was doing team teaching. I was teaching. There was another teacher in the room, but sometimes, you know, I just didn't feel like it was a team. And when I talked to my friends, when we had uh, company trainings or uh, when I talked to other AOTs about it, it sounded like their experiences were really similar too. If they were teaching in elementary schools, they would usually be the T1. And if they were uh, teaching in junior high schools, they would be the T2. So from my own experience, I couldn't answer what good team teaching is. And perhaps if we look into what the ministry says, they will have more information, right? One of the things I found in 2003 written by the ministry was this quote. They wanted ALTs and Japanese teachers to always assist and support each other to promote positive feedback from students. Ah, oh. <laughs> what, what does that mean? What does it mean to always support and assist each other? Right? Sounds like a marriage, but I still didn't really get it. Uh, and of course, that was just one quote. And there were some kind of some other information uh, back in 2002, but not quite enough. Um, in 2013, there was an AOT handbook written by the British Council as well, uh, as, well as Max. Um, and we got more information. So let's take a look. It's quite long, so I'm not going to read it. Please go ahead.
All right, so the ALT handbook is quite thick. It's like a hundred something pages. And this was on page seven, I believe. Um, and this was the introduction. I think it's a little bit better because it kind of gives us the idea that there are some things that the ALTs will be doing that the JTEs, uh, that, that would help the JTEs out. Um, but are there problems with this? Uh, even though this is just an introduction and I'm already criticizing it, uh, of course there are problems. The first problem I have is with the word native speaker because this, this part kind of implies that all AOTs are native speakers and only native speakers can be AOTs. And it kind of also means that, you know, if you're not an AOT, uh, sorry, if you're not a native speaker, then you can't really fulfill um, these things that um, they're expecting AOTs to do. So I don't like that. Uh, but other than that, it kind of also comes with the idea that there are certain tasks such as providing students with a real reason to use English as a communication tool. Um, and this is a task that only the AOTs can do and the JTs can't do. Um, is kind of creating a divide um, that kind of separates the two teams, uh, sorry, the, the two teachers. And to me, it didn't feel very positive. Uh, if you want to hear me talk a bit more about my own identity as a teacher in Japan that is sometimes viewed as a native speaker, but sometimes also viewed as a non-native speaker, uh, please come to the Equity EOT Japan uh, 2021 forum in the coming January. Uh, I'm one of the invited speakers and I will be uh, talking more about that. Okay, now back to your regularly scheduled program. Uh, going back to what I was talking about. So this handbook had a lot more information, and this is just the introduction, but it does lead into the idea of a separated team. Rather than team teaching, it sounded like the two teachers would be doing different things, and it is a very common uh, observation, such as uh, observed by uh, Tajino and Walker, right? Each teacher would focus on a different responsibility uh, of English and cultural education. Uh, so if you have the JTE and you have the ALT, um, the JTE would be focusing on certain things within English education, whereas the ALT would be doing something that is uh, a different side, a, a different aspect of English teaching, right? Um, now, this is usually the point where someone would tell me, well, Jackson, of course that makes sense because ALTs and JTEs are different. And uh, to that, I reply, I, I agree 100%. In fact, I agree so much that I've prepared like two, three slides to agree with you. Um, and these are the differences between JTEs and ALTs. Um, warning, there's going to be a lot of generalization ahead. So if you are prone to dizziness or any kind of sickness, when you hear generalization, uh, please just be warned. Um, I'm going to talk about three things that are that I find to be fundamental differences um, between the two teachers. The first is the background. For JTEs, all of them would have gone through at least four years of education in education, and they would have also um, passed a, an exam and obtained their license to teach. For ALTs, on the other hand, uh, me included, I came to Japan with no interest in education. Uh, I was doing a job, but I wasn't really thinking that this would be a career for me. So the two teachers have very different backgrounds coming in to teaching the same class, uh, teaching the same lesson. Um, another huge difference is the focus. AOTs often um, focus on the lesson itself. We think about, okay, now let's make sure uh, the students are talking. Let's make sure they're uh, communicating with each other. Let's make sure they uh, understand the keywords. Let's make sure they are good with the pronunciation. Let's make sure they enjoy the class and have fun. Meanwhile, the JTEs are thinking about, well, okay, let's see how the students are mingling with each other. Let's see how they're responding to the teachers, responding to a different language. Let's see how they are growing uh, as a team, as a class, and as individuals as well. Oh, right. And then there's also the test. Let me make sure that they are getting enough support so that they can pass the exam or get a good grade. Whereas the ALT will be a uh, what test? Oh, I'm just singing a song here. Right? So what we look at will be very different. And the third fundamental difference I want to highlight is how they're viewed by students. Um, the Japanese teachers viewed by students are usually they'll be viewed as mentors, uh, teachers, educators, um, advisor, coach, 
counselor, maybe even a parent uh, in some cases. And for the ALTs, uh, of course, teachers, educators, that's in it, but also rock star, celebrity, Bruno Mars. Like I, I used to walk into classrooms and students would cheer because I was there. Uh, but the JTEs would never receive that. Like, I'm sorry, Kobesh sensei, it's just, you know, reality, right? We're just different. Um, and on top of the three fundamental differences, there's also a lot of individual differences uh, among teachers. So of course the two are different. However, coming back to this idea though, is just because the two teachers are good at different things, um, it often leads to an idea of uh, sympathizing that, okay, what we're going to do is, well, something is written in English, so it is the ALT's job to read it. And the JTE would always avoid reading it. And then sometimes it will be opposite, right? Oh, this is something about grammar. So, okay, Jackson, go back to standing in the corner. I'm going to take care of it. And then I'll just be standing at the corner, right? And, you know, okay, it's a song time. So now it's back to the ALT. This divide, a very clear divide um, is something I didn't really enjoy because I didn't feel like I was teaching in a team. I was rather teaching mini lessons. Okay, I'm gonna teach a mini lesson about this song. Okay, and now the, the, the JT is going to teach a mini lesson about um, well, this grammar point. So we're teaching mini lessons, but we are switching back and forth. To me, it still didn't really feel like team teaching. It felt like we were kind of doing different things, but we were being forced into a relationship called team teaching. At the same time, what we do every day was enforcing uh, a divorce between the two of us. And that made me really sad, to be honest. I like the teachers, they liked me as well, but I wished we could work better together um, with the idea of team teaching. Now, what I envision what team teaching is, what good team teaching is, is would be uh, a dynamic duel. We'll be standing side by side, not physically, but mentally we work together as a team. We go approach the class together as a team. Sure, we might be focusing on different things, but we know that we can trust on each other and we will be teaching together. And here is a different um, definition or a different idea that I've heard several times throughout the years in the past. Um, let's take a look. The ALT and the JTE should each be able to assume the role of the T1 or T2 when it is necessary. Um, I, I can't tell you who said it because this is just one of those things that I've heard several times um, over casual conversations. But I do like this idea a lot more. The main thing is the flexibility that, okay, it's not that because this is a song or this is pronunciation, I will always throw it at Jackson. But rather, depending on the situation, you know, both teachers could do the T1 or T2 uh, and do all tasks the part I didn't like, however, is the when necessary, because rather than it being a strategy or thinking this is better, um, it, it sounds more like it was forced. Okay, ah, it's necessary. So the ALT would do this part, ah, it's necessary. Uh, so the JT would do that part. So that's the part I didn't enjoy. And I would like to propose a different version of this. Team teaching would be that the ALT and JTE should each be able to assume the role of T1 or T2 to accomplish different goals. I think, um, I believe strongly that this approach is a lot more open and a lot more welcoming. Um, who said it? Well, I did, <laughs> uh, but of course you don't have to quote me on it. Um, but I, I like this a lot more because the focus is not about when it is necessary for the ALT to step up or the JT to step up. The focus is on the goals that we're trying to achieve, right? So while they are looking at the same task, depending on the purpose, depending on what they're trying to achieve, maybe it is better for the ALT to do it. Maybe it's better for the JT to do it. Let me give you an example. 
All right, evaluating students' speaking tests. Uh, I would say, I would boldly claim that typically this is something that the ALT would do because generally the ALTs are better at uh, evaluating the pronunciation of the students. They're more attuned to the sentences and uh, structures of what the students are saying. And a lot of people would say, and I believe, I strongly believe that it is true that uh, this can give the students the sense of oh, I've been learning and practicing English. Now I am using it with an English speaker who is for some reason wearing sunglasses. But at the same time, there are reasons for the JTE to be the ones evaluating and speaking to students during speaking tests uh, or maybe they're marking, right? For example, if you have a class where the students are just for some reason not very well connected with the ALT, or because they're, because they're very shy or they're not very confident, it would be great to let the JTE, someone they see on a daily basis um, to evaluate instead. It will help them lower their anxiety and perhaps it will boost their performance. And with better performance, they might feel more confident in their English. So this is you know, one uh, situation where it might be better to let the JTE do it. Another reason could be when the JTE needs to see the students' performances uh, and evaluate them so that they can write into the report cards. So rather than letting the ALT do the testing and the JT is organizing, okay, next Kensuke come here, next Yuka come here, next Yuka come here, right? Maybe it's better to actually let the JT do it so that he knows or she knows what is going on with each student and then they can write it directly into the report card. So depending on the purpose, I can see that um, each teacher can fulfill a different uh, goal, all right? So this is just one example. And I think this uh, can go into a lot of other tasks that we do in classrooms. Uh, and here is where the workshop comes in, right? I've, uh, this is supposed to be a short workshop. So this is the promised workshop part. Uh, please don't just immediately leave because you're going to be talking with other people. But here are um, three other tasks that I would like you to discuss with your group mates, right? So start with number two, reading English instructions from textbook. Um, so I want you to discuss with your group um, and I'm gonna put it into the chat as well. So talk to your group, in what situation or for what purposes might it be better for the ALT to read the English instructions in the textbook? And the opposite, when might it be better for the JTE to do it? Okay, I know I don't have a whole lot of time, so let's have a breakout session for about three minutes. Go through as many as you can. Don't worry if you can't finish them all. Um, and James, if you can help me out with the organizing, uh, that would be great. Oh, Aaron left.
Hello, Carol. Hello, Adrian. Were you in the room by yourself? I hope yes. not. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You, you okay. just, no yeah, you, I, I hope at least you have some time to reflect <laughs> and think about it on your own. Reflecting with the daughter. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. So you had someone with you. All right. Um. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. That that you had to talk to yourself. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm just going to wait till everyone's back, uh, but I'm going to prepare for uh, going full screen. Is it full screen now? Okay, thank you. Okay, I think everyone's back and uh, just looking at the time I need to uh, continue. So I hope that you have some time to think uh, and talk to other people, share your ideas about when it might be better for the ALT or the JTE to be taking the certain task on. Um, so for example, this, this is just for uh, my, my reflection. So for number two, for example, um, it's commonly the ALT reading the English instructions so that the students can get used to the sound of English. But at the same time, what I really like is to encourage um, the Japanese teachers to read the English instructions to show and demonstrate to students. See, Japanese people can read English for the purposes for other people to listen to as well. It's not always a task thrown to the English speaker, right? Uh, for number three, um, when is the JTE choosing students to answer questions? Uh, it's a lot easier for them to pay attention to who might be able to answer the question, who might not be able to answer the question, who uh, might be a student who usually don't put their hands up. Uh, so make sure they get the opportunity. Uh, on the other hand, you know, the ALT would have the, the rock star effect when they choose and call on your name, right? So um, there are a lot more and I would love to hear your ideas, but because of time, I do have to move on. However, what I wanted us to practice is the mindset that, okay, even though we're having, we're looking at one task, it's not always one teacher who should be doing it because for different reasons, it might be nice for the other person to do it. Um, and this is the mindset I want to conclude on, which is the ALT and JTE should each be able to assume the role of T1 or T2 to accomplish different goals. This is uh, the mindset that I really want to push and encourage because basic, basing the goal, uh, sorry, focusing on the goal, um, the teachers can as a team decide, okay, who is going to do this part? In order to make this happen, the two teachers would have to support each other. They need to know who they're working with uh, but most importantly, they need to focus on not what they're going to do, but what they're going to achieve together as a team. To me, this is the essence of team teaching. And that was the great myth of effective team teaching. Again, my name is Jackson. Thank you very much. And these are the three references I used, not a whole lot. Um, and also just a final shameless plug, I will be presenting uh, at the Equity ALT Japan Forum. But also one more thing I've been looking into is to do trainings for ALTs and JTEs and uh, BOEs, to be honest. So if there are BOEs who are especially the ones doing direct hires and they don't really have a program set up to train the JTEs and ALTs. And if you know someone in the Board of Education or in JTE uh, who might be interested and they know someone, please hit me up because I really want to find opportunities for me to offer my chances to help and improve the relationship between, uh, between ALTs and JTEs. But I think that is time. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Yeah, J uh, Jackson, thank you for your, your stimulating pre presentation. Um, 
could have had an hour really hey to go into <laughs> a, a nitty-gritty um maybe next time get a workshop set up um so um, i'd just like to invite all of the presentation uh, pr participants to unmike their mukes <laughs> <laughs> unmike their mukes <laughs> oh wow yeah you know what i mean uh we'd like to give uh, jackson a round of applause uh uh, thank you very much right. for your for your time uh right. yeah if you'd like to uh, keep talking to jackson we do have the hangout rooms available um they are on the website and i'd just like to point your attention to the sponsors um if you could check them out as well they help r the run the conference so one more time thank you very much jackson i'm right. going to be stopping the video here thank, thank you. you um yeah